Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. With me today is Ryan Sia, joining us from Singapore. He's the CEO of Rake. Our topic is the world's first palm controlled gaming device, the Rake Tectonic Pro. Welcome, Ryan. Hi, Catherine. Good to see you. All right, I understand it's very early in the morning in Singapore. I know you don't want me to remind you of that. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's 6 a.m. here now. Okay, well, tell us what we've all been wondering. What is the Rake Tectonic Pro? Cool. Uh, so the Rake Tectonic Pro is basically our maiden device. It's the world's first force pad. So it's basically a mechanical keyboard together with the force pad below. The force pad is something uh, not to be mistaken with the trackpad. And basically what you do is by moving your palm uh, up, down, left, right in, a, in just a gentle manner uh, with some force, you can send an input uh, into your computer. So the basic functionality of this is definitely to replace WASD. And now what that means is it basically lets gamers free up their fingers to press all their abilities or any other things uh, and lets them react faster. And we find that with this technology, gamers can actually react up to two times as fast uh, than when they play normally with just the keyboard and mouse. It's also really more intuitive and comfortable compared to uh, just the keyboard and mouse. It's very intuitive like the gaming controller itself. Essentially, we wanted to create a game changer which would combine the best of both worlds for the keyboard and mouse as well as the gaming controller. So that in itself gave birth to this idea, which is the um, Rec Tectonic Pro. So who invented it? Good question. So in 2020, uh, my founders and I actually participated in an uh, entrepreneurship competition which challenged us to create something that will change the world. Uh, the three of us were all avid gamers and still are avid gamers. And we felt that, you know, we wanted to take a challenge to create a hardware device. Uh, not so much software because we, we see a lot of software startups nowadays and we wanted to challenge ourselves a little bit. So we took up that challenge and uh, my co-founder, uh, CJ, he had this idea to create an input device which would really allow gaming to be much more efficient. And he came up with this idea. Uh, I remember our first prototype was actually a bottle cap put on top of a plasticine model. Um, but we won the competition because of the proof of concept of the idea. And it was a very exciting start to us. Since then, it's been two years. And we've actually just finished our Kickstarter campaign. Uh, and we managed to raise $55,000 with a 415% goal reached. Fantastic. So is the um, device patented yet? So we are patent pending, uh, but we definitely have the patent filed already. So where, where is it uh, patented or where is, um, would it be in Singapore or in other countries? Yes, so we have uh, filed a patent, a PCT, uh, which basically covers worldwide for the first 18 months. Uh, right now, we are using it as a time delay before we get the funds to create the uh, international patents worldwide looking to basically patent at the most important markets like the US, Singapore, uh, Indonesia, Japan, uh, definitely China, uh, all these few markets. And how about South Korea? Oh, definitely South Korea. <laughs> South Korea is such a huge market. This device is uh, a real game changer, especially in, for League of Legends, uh, because you can basically use it to pan your camera. Uh, that means that you don't really have to move your mouse to the edges, and that makes your mouse more uh, efficient in that sense. And South Korea is known to be, well, the hotspot for League of Legends. So that leads me to the question, are you a League of Legends player, or do you have other games that you play? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm an avid gamer. Um, I played League of Legends since season three. Uh, I think that makes it about nine years now, nine, nine, ten years. Um, and I play other games like Apex Legends. Recently, I've been trying out the pad for Elden Ring. Uh, I have played a whole bunch of single player games. Uh, back when I was uh, back when I was a kid, when I was using the Xbox, I actually had a whole stockpile of games as well. So I I would say I I gamed a lot until you know the startup work start started to come in. So you're the developers of this, the three of you, are you all League of Legends players or do, do people play different games? Oh, uh, we, we actually play quite different games. Um, one of my co-founders, CJ, he is more of an Overwatch player. Uh, he also plays a bit of Counter-Strike. Then uh, my third co-founder, Ping Zhang, uh, he is more of a Valorant player. And tell us more about the rest of your background other than gaming. Um, you, I got the impression that you have been a, a student fairly recently. Tell us about that. Yeah, so actually I am a business student in the National University of Singapore. Uh, besides that, my two other co-founders, CJ and Ping Zhang, uh, are also from the National University of Singapore. Uh, they study industrial systems and engineering. But CJ is actually dropping out of school uh, to be working on our startup full time. And Ping Zhang has graduated already. He is currently in China uh, settling our manufacturing and our distribution routes. Oh, terrific. So are you in the process of manufacturing it um, or have you manufactured some? Yes, so now we have tested the first bit of manufacturing and we will be basically doing the small changes here and there to the design to make sure that it's a bit more durable and robust. Uh, with a bit more tests, we will then start manufacturring roughly May-June period. Okay, um, so tell us about what it's compatible with and, and how that works. And we can show some more pictures of the product. Sure. So this product is compatible with uh, any systems, actually. Windows, Android, Linux. Um, if you are asking in terms of games, it's compatible with most games, uh, particularly for mobile uh, games like League of Legends and Dota, because it makes your mouse more uh, mouse efficient. You can also use it for uh, FPS, for replacing WASD, so that your fingers can be resting on your abilities uh, to really react in the microseconds uh, faster. Uh, you can also use it for uh, MMORPGs like Final Fantasy XIV, which is well known to have a lot of buttons to press. So by uh, taking out the WASD aspect, you can actually put all the buttons together uh, in the section of the keyboard, which makes it a lot more uh, button efficient. So your hands don't need to reach all the way to the other side of the keyboard. Uh, all this, I would say, actually combined to be uh, one of, or rather, all the big game genres. I would say maybe the genre, game genre, which we don't really quite cater to, is uh, for music and rhythm games, uh, because those are still best played with the stylus. Sure. So the testing that you did on this, um, was it with League of Legends or with other another game? So we did uh, about 40 gamers per, uh, per genre. And for mobile, we uh, tested this with League of Legends. And, and what have people, what has been the feedback um, from that testing? Yeah, so a lot of people really like the, the fact that, you know, now you can, uh, you can totally free up your fingers to move around, especially for FPS. And for League of Legends players, they're like, wow, you know, this should be the way that the game has been, should be played. 
But of course, there is still some muscle memory changes uh, that they have to make. So some people are a bit uncomfortable with that, but they all say that, you know, given time, they think it's not going to be an issue. Do you think that this device will um, allow people to have less repetitive um, use injuries, like, you know, do this healthier or, or do you know one way or the other? Uh, honestly, it acts like a wrist pad. So we, we've talked to a lot of doctors and they say this wouldn't help people uh, with their wrist injuries or their finger injuries uh, very much because they are still using the keyboard. Uh, but because they are using more of their palm, not their wrist, uh, there is no health issues to this. And it really acts very similar, like a wrist pad in terms of ergonomics. Sure. And is this something that would be attractive to pros or would it be more focused on amateurs? Uh, I think it's a bit of both because there is quite a bit of quality of life for the amateurs that they can really appreciate. Uh, it also feels really good to move around with uh, with a pad instead of WASD because you, you get a full range of movement. It's a 360-degree movement uh, compared to with your WASD. And by freeing up your fingers, it just feels a lot more comfortable. So there's a lot of uh, quality of life there. Uh, but for pros, because the pad itself allows them to physically react faster, um, there is microseconds of uh, change. So I think that really caters to them. But pros generally tend to have a higher uh, muscle memory. So it will take a slightly longer for them to get used to it. And pros may not be willing to sacrifice the, uh, the tournament potential in the very short term for it. So they'll have to find a longer break to take on this device. Sure, and I would think that if someone starts their gaming career by using the device, that mm. um, and they were, you know, uh, they could become a pro and continue to use yeah. it. Exactly, it's a it's a device that allows gamers to really show their full potential, and doesn't limit um, them based on the hardware. Actually, one of the cool facts that we found out is that the keyboard and the mouse have been around for 30 years in the gaming industry. 30 years. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we see that, you know, it's become clickier. Uh, mechanical keyboards have come around, which does help somewhat. Uh, but the form has not changed. We are still using the QWERTY keyboard, even though some people have been pushed, uh, have been pushing for different sort of form changes. It wasn't really... Uh, made for gaming um, and that's why we, 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 we were trying to think okay why um, has there been so little change and one of the reasons that we found out was that um, basically people don't want to veer too much from the norm and so we say okay sure you know you can use your current keyboards but here is the world's first force pad you just need to pluck it uh, to your keyboard because uh, it's magnetically attachable uh, to keyboards which have a metal frame at the bottom. Uh, and that way, people can actually use it together with their keyboards and get all the benefit. Uh, you don't necessarily have to buy our rec, um, tectonic keyboard, even though it's a really good uh, five-pin hot swappable, which means like a custom keyboard. Um, but they can really just use the pad together with any keyboard of theirs. So in looking at the picture, okay, yeah. so let's bring up the picture that shows the pad, the mouse, and the keyboard. Okay, so the mouse, okay, what is different with the mouse than other um, competitors? Uh, okay, so this mouse is an our mouse. Uh, we, we used it. Uh, primarily just for the photo shoot. Oh, okay. um, the, the, the mouse isn't quite ours, but the pad can actually emulate the mouse as well. So you could use the pad for uh, 
more this is more for persons with disabilities actually. So we wanted to make the device a very inclusive device. So we inputted, uh, or rather we let the device emulate a whole bunch of uh, other things like the joystick as well as the mouse. And so people can actually use the uh, pad, especially for persons with disabilities, use the pad to emulate the mouse or to actually paint and draw uh, where they would otherwise have issue doing with just a simple keyboard and mouse. Uh, due to their disabilities. So it's, it's quite interesting. Actually, the pet uh, on the right side, uh, let me just show it up real, real quick here. On the right side of the pet over here, there's actually a button which allows people to uh, very quickly, uh, yeah, the right side over here, um, very quickly change the profiles of the pet. My profiles is more like a, um, they can do preset profiles. That means it's either emulating the keyboard WASD or it's emulating um, a certain sort of combination of div uh, of uh, shortcuts. Like for example, it can uh, sort of do control C, control V if you press up or you press down uh, or you can even emulate the mouse. So you want to make it as easy as possible for people to navigate their daily lives uh, with the pad and as easy as possible for people with disabilities as well to use it for uh, empowering them to navigate the virtual space. Oh, let's look at the, the keyboard. Yeah. Now, is that your keyboard then? Uh, yes, this is our keyboard. This is uh, okay. fully our keyboard. Okay, and why, do you, why are the keys red? Well, I mean, red is our is, is our brand color, and honestly, we choose red because we feel that you know red is a very radical color. It's a color that inspires a lot of energy and passion, as well as a bit of uh, revolution, which is where we want to uh, really stance ourselves in the industry. Uh, we are looking to come here for change, and we are here to make a change in uh, creating innovations in the gaming hardware industry. Now, when you first were um, tasked with the, um, the challenge of creating or inventing something new, um, mm. uh, how long did it take you to come up with this idea? Uh, the idea came within two weeks, actually, but um, and maybe even lesser than that. I can't quite, I can't quite remember. Uh, but it's been two years of development for us. Uh, we have been designing this um, over and over again to make the prototype uh, really robust and durable. Because, I mean, if someone has done this before, uh, it would have been a lot easier. But because no one has done this before, we, we've done prototype after prototype to make this a proof of concept as well as to make it uh, robust. So we initially uh, thought we could get by with about 22 prototypes uh, and then we'll finally get this out. But lo and behold, right now we are on prototype 40, I think 48. Well, um, that's pretty expensive. So are you still yeah. seeking funding? Uh, so in terms of the, I will, I would say in terms of the cost, actually, we have to thank the Singapore government for giving us a grant to help a bit in terms of our 3D printing. So we have actually 3D printed a whole bunch of prototypes, uh, especially lately for the more, uh, I would say complete prototypes, which has helped us to test, uh, much, much, much more uh, in depth. So let me give you an example. Not sure whether you can see it, but here is one of our prototypes itself. Uh, it looks more or less complete to us. And this is actually done 3D printed. And it was with the help of the Singapore government that we could uh, do this 3D printing. So I think you're an inspiration for so many people who are in gaming who wow. would want to invent something new. And right. do you have any advice for anyone that might follow in your footsteps and try to create 
a totally new product in gaming? Um, I would say totally go for it. Um, but when you go into this industry, be ready to be a lot slower. Um, it's very important to create a device whereby not only is the concept good, but whatever you deliver is uh, durable, high quality, uh, as well as wouldn't let people down in terms of uh, like um, the final the final product functionality. In fact, it really has to wow people when it gets to them. Uh, but more than that, there's a lot of things to settle in terms of the manufacturing, in terms of the, uh, the software, the firmware. Uh, it's not just the product design shell. So there's a lot of things that have to be taken into account, which is very different, very, very different uh, from the fast-paced nature of other industries, uh, hot industries like the metaverse industry or the NFT industry nowadays. Uh, so if someone were to come in, I would say you have to have a lot of patience uh, when doing this. But it's, it's a, when you have a really good concept, I say go for it, really, really go for it. Our industry in terms of the gaming hardware industry has so little innovations. Uh, so I would really urge anyone who has a concept to come in and yeah, just, just try a proof of concept. Try it on Kickstarter, try it on Indiegogo. Uh, build yourself a prototype. Sure. So what's particularly interesting to me is that you've been doing this for two years, which have yeah. been, has been during the pandemic. How has the pandemic influenced the um, speed at which you were able to create this and create prototypes and get financing? Right. Uh, in terms of financing, we didn't have quite much of an issue because uh, together with our advisor, we self-raised about $250,000, uh, Singapore dollars. So that'll be about uh, $180,000 USD uh, for our own startup capital, which is quite needed for hardware startups. Um, but for the pandemic itself, it has really restricted us in terms of going overseas for important business meetings, uh, as well as conferences. Actually, this year in January, uh, I was supposed to attend the Consumer Electronics Show, uh, CES, in the US, uh, Las Vegas. But because of the sudden surge in COVID-19 cases, um, I was not able to go, as well as a lot of our key partners actually suddenly pulled out from the show itself. So there wasn't much point in me flying all the way to the US. Uh, beyond that, there were also key partners that we wanted to talk to in Indonesia, uh, as well as Japan. But because of the pandemic, again, we couldn't really fly. So in terms of the business side, there was a lot of holdups. In terms of the uh, manufacturing side, <laughs> well, there is, there is a worldwide uh shipping issue so thankfully we told our backers um that there is quite a bit of time hopefully nothing big happens uh fingers crossed but there has also been quite a fair sh share of our uh, manufacturing challenges since right now in china things are really really very strict so my co-founder thankfully he's chinese uh, and he is able to navigate around things quite well. Uh, they actually have to test for COVID-19 every single day. Oh, uh, my goodness. Yes, it's very, very strict. Uh, and without that, he some days there's sudden lockdowns, so he, his, his activities there are restricted at times. It's very uh, restrictive, I would say, in terms of the COVID-19 situation, but uh, there, there's not much choice. We, we have to get around with it. We have to adapt to, uh, to thrive. So during the two years of development, um, you've had to learn a lot, I would imagine. Uh, right. How have you gone about learning how to uh, do what you had to do? Hmm. Uh, I think there was a lot of uh, YouTube video watching. Uh, there was a lot of YouTube video watching. There was a lot of mentorship involved. Thankfully, our advisor was, uh, he's basically 
um, one of the ex chairman of the Singapore Fel uh, Manufacturing Federation, as well as uh, one of the ex board members of the Enterprise Singapore. So he was able to give us good business advice, as well as manufacturing advice. Together with him, there were a few other mentors, uh, like for example, you are closely partnered with Esports Entertainment Asia. And the founder of Esports Entertainment Asia, Johnny, uh, he was able to really come in and give us good advice. So together with the mentors and together with all of YouTube, I was able to put two and two together. And uh, it really helped to create a lot of miracles. And that's one of the few important things I would say is important in the hardware, as a hardware startup. Uh, it's not easy to come up with a product in just two years, in fact. So uh, I have to thank all of them, as well as thank YouTube for uh, getting me so far. Fantastic. So when will this be ready for purchase? Yes, so now it's actually ready for pre-order on our website. Uh, people can go to our website. Yes, uh, we just flash our website real quick. Uh, you can see all of our product details from the website itself. If you scroll down, uh, you can pre-order the pad itself, the keyboard itself, or uh, the Pro, which is the Pad Plus keyboard. And if you scroll down even more, uh, you can see more details about our device. You can take a look at the video, which is further down. Uh, if you scroll down all the way, uh, you will be able to see, scroll down even further. Um, you can see some of our testimonials. Uh, you can see our gaming device videos in terms of how it works. We have been featured by about 50 media, so feel free to uh, do a quick Google search about us as well. And yeah, you know, we, we try to put as much details about our device on the website as much as we can. So people can pre-order right now uh, for a pretty good discount, uh, up to 22% discount, uh, maybe even more at certain peaks. And uh, the product will be ready itself in the August to October period. And that's where we'll okay. be doing our product okay. launch. Yeah. So how much will it cost? Yeah, so right now, retail cost for the pad is 119 USD and the uh, keyboard itself is 149 USD with the, with the Pro going for 259 USD. Uh, we are looking to see whether we would like to keep it that way or whether there might be changes, but it's basically that way right now. Uh, the prices reflected on our website is currently in SGD. Oh, terrific. Um, well, I think um, that that's going to be very popular and I hope uh, lots of people uh, will get something out of this from yeah. you providing your story. Uh, it's such an interesting story and it reminds me a lot of Shark Tank. Um, uh, yeah. Do you and your, um, your founders or inventors of this, do you watch that? Of course, Shark Tank is such a huge show. Uh, I, I personally drew a lot of inspiration as well as my ability to pitch uh, from Shark Tank itself. So it, it was a very interesting show growing up. Fantastic. All right. So I'm going to give you the last word to let us know how, how people can find you. Cool. So uh, like I said, you know, you can find us on our website. Do feel free to pre-order there. In the next coming weeks, we'll be doing a whole bunch of hardware blogs as well as potential YouTube videos. So do stay out for that. Uh, our first YouTube video is going to be pretty exciting in terms of me and my co-founder uh, bantering about how much we will pay for certain budget mice. So it should be pretty exciting. And uh, I would say we have a very, very exciting year ahead leading up to the product launch. So stay tuned. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ryan. I appreciate you being on here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. Thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Rui Alexander Jesus. We'll discuss global esports differences and similarities around the world. See you then.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.